Now, concerning reports in the Daily Telegraph today that the nation's e-safety commissioner has found more than 1.3 million Australian children under the age of 13 are already active on social media. This is completely flouting the current existing age restrictions. Bridget, you know, the social media companies say they've got age restrictions, but they're clearly not working at all. Absolutely, Shari. Uh, I think it's a really tough environment, not just for young people um, who are subject to a whole lot of negative influences on social media, but parents who are trying to keep their children safe uh, and for platforms to say they have an age restriction and then not in any way ask for verification of age uh, really just allows these platforms to be open to abuse. So we've been calling for a long time for age verification to be part of our regulatory environment here. Um, there is debate about how young we set that, but at the very least, we should be making sure we do everything we can um, to protect young people. And it was fascinating to see two premiers out, two Labor premiers from the right wing, uh, Malinowskis and Minns, um, promoting the mm. fact that we need to keep our children safe online. The Coalition federally has been promoting that for a long time. It'd be great to see federal Labor catch up. It's going to be a big generational shift, though, Holly, to have to see parents mm. try and get their kids offline when there's already 1.3 million children under the age of 13. Now we're talking about raging, raising the age restrictions to 14 or 16. So this is going to be a big cultural change that families are going to have to try and adjust to. Absolutely it is and um, I've been reading The Anxious Generation by Jonathan Haidt which ties the introduction of smartphones to an increase in anxiety and depression particularly around young girls uh, but across this new generation that have grown up with smartphones. I do think whilst there is an obligation on the social media giants to make sure that there is age verification, I do think that there are things that parents can do. You know, if your kid needs to have a phone, that's great, but maybe not a smartphone because we know some of the bullying that goes on online and the reason it continues both in and outside of the schoolyard is because it's constantly available on the phone. So perhaps if we saw kids go back to maybe the old... I don't know, was it Nokia 310 or something <laughs> that we had, that the only game on it was Snake? Yes, it, you could send a text exactly. message and receive a phone call about keeping kids safe. And, and maybe it is parents at schools coming together and say, that's it, we're not allowing kids to have smartphones until they're 16 or 14, uh, and parents get together so you're not having the peer pressure within the classroom at the schools. So it's not just about government intervention. Mm -hmm. I do think it's time that parents start to take some responsibility here and say, you know what, you are too young to have access to this technology 24-7 and we're going to do something about it. Chari, it's not just about um, bullying, etc., yeah. that comes online. We've got young men in particular being exposed to, you know, pornography like, you know, Penthouse and mm. Playboy, which was uh, the du jour in the 70s and 80s <laughs> when I grew up. Um, it is just so explicit. It is... Uh, we violent. Know it is violent and it is contributing to the treatment of young women. Uh, and if we really want to see this generation of young people grow up as happy and healthy and well-adjusted adults, we need to stop filling their minds with such negative and atrocious material.